And so, <clears throat> I write this book, The Illusion of Death, and it centers around a Tibetan Buddhist phenomenon known as Rainbow Body. And in it, certain practitioners uh, who follow a certain yogic practice dissolve their bodies into their atomic parts at death. Now, understandably, people have a very difficult time with that. <clears throat> it's hard to envision a human body dematerializing, vanishing. However, we have scientific proof that that happens, and it's in the Shroud of Turin. So I put together this little video, and I call it the shocking secret of the sacred shroud. The shroud is a 14 foot by 4 foot, approximately, ancient linen cloth that contains the faint straw-colored image of a prone, naked, crucified man. The crucifixion wounds uh, are consistent with the biblical accounts of Jesus' death. It is the actual burial cloth of Jesus, but I don't have time to go in, uh, into that now. The, uh, it's owned by the Catholic Church. Of course, skeptics say it is a complete fraud. In 1988, the Catholic Church released the cloth for radiocarbon dating, and the results show that uh, it had a manufacture date of somewhere between 1260 and 1390. Of course, the skeptics come out of the woodwork. I told you it was a fraud. It can't be Jesus' burial cloth. It is, uh, uh, it is not old enough. Okay. But what they don't understand and as ever atomic physicist would tell them, that you cannot accurately date a linen cloth that has been exposed to atomic radiation. It will always appear younger than it actually is. So there's been over a hundred years of research on the Shroud of Turin. And under high resolution photography, it has been determined that there are no artistic brush marks. There are no signs of artistic substances such as paint, pie, dye, or pigment. The, uh, the cloth is made of threads. The threads are made of fibrils. There are about 100 to 200 fibrils in a thread. And each one is about the size of a human hair. What happened is the fibrils were bombarded with an atomic uh, particle that had low penetrating power. The bombardment chain altered the chemistry of the fibril, of the cloth, such that it aged faster than it normally would. The image on the cloth is contained in the top one to two fibrils. It is very superficial and the reason we have a color is image because of artificial aging. It aged the image area of the cloth age faster than the non-image area. <laughs> now there's a really interesting feature that you might have a little problem with. All the fibrils in the image area <clears throat> are colored to the same extent but not all of the fibrils are colored. So you have where the cloth actually touched the body, say like at the nose, then you have more colored fibrils than where the cloth did not touch the body, like the eye sockets. And what happens is when atomic particles are in motion, they spread themselves out like a wave. So if you think of a pond, a still pond, and you toss a pebble in it, you'll see the waves expand out. That's the way atomic particles move. So what happens is where the cloth physically touched the body, there is no physical room for this spread outness to take place. Where the cloth is removed from the body, 
then there is room for the particles to spread out. So what you find in areas of the, of the image areas where the cloth did not actually touch the body, you'll find that you'll have a fibril color and the next door neighbor fibrils may not be colored, colored, not colored, colored, not colored. And that's the difference between light and dark. The, an, energy, uh, an energy release took place in the tomb. So we look at the blood samples on the, on the, uh, on the cloth. There are about 130 of them. There's one that is a, a wound uh, at a, right adjacent to the nipple on the right side. It happened after Jesus was, had died, and it corresponds to the business end of a, of a Roman lance. There are about 30 head wounds from a crown of thorns, but it's not really a crown of thorns, it's a helmet of thorns that extends down to his neck. And then there are about 100 wounds from flogging. Now, if you cut your body, your arm, and you put a bandage over it, when you take that bandage off, the stain on the cloth, on the bandage, will bear little, if any, resemblance to the wound that created it. But that's not the case in the shroud. In the shroud, the stain on the cloth is actually a replica of the wound that created it. It is as if something pushed the clot, not a, it's really not a stain, it's a blood clot, pushed it into the cloth. The and incidentally, there's no image area, there's no image uh, fibril, colored, uh, colored fibrils under the blood stain. Uh, so the pushing took place first, all right, and then image formation took place after that. In some cases, you can go around to the back of the cloth and you can actually see this, the clot itself. It's been physically pushed into, uh, into the cloth. There's another one that's pretty easy to comprehend, and it signifies an energy release, is that the image is anatomically correct. Now, if I were to take a linen cloth and lay it over my face, it would naturally contour to my face. If image formation took place in that natural position, then when you fold the cloth out straight, as we view it today, then the image would be distorted. I, I ran this on myself on, on this for my particular shape face shape that the distance from nostril to nostril in contour position would increase by over 50 percent when I straighten the cloth out. Something caused that cloth to be in motion at the time of image formation. <clears throat> so knowing that we can now reread the gospel accounts of the first Easter Sunday. Then in Mark, Luke, and John, when the visitors arrived at the tomb, they found the entry stone had been removed. That would be because of uh, an energy release inside the tomb that forced the entry stone away. Mark, they all find also light present at the tomb. So in Mark and, and Luke, they find men inside the tomb, and they're wearing white clothing. But it's not really white. The Greek term for, that they use for white means bright, dazzling, brilliant, lightning light. They're all telling us that there was a light, a flash of light, and the entry stone was removed. Uh, Matthew goes into a little bit more detail he says there was a great earthquake that coincided with an angel who appeared like lightning, wearing snow white, i.e. bright, dazzling, brilliant, lightning-like clothing. What Matthew is saying is there was a flash of light, a rumbling of the earth so strong that it pushed the entry stone aside. So, you put all that together, and there's more reasons. I don't have time to go into all of them. But it shows that 
Jesus' body actually dematerialized, and it did so with the release of energy. The, uh, and of course, you don't hear about this in mainstream. The church can't talk about it because it is heavily invested in a doctrine of resurrection of the body, and the Shroud of Turin actually denies that doctrine. And the mainstream science cannot talk about it because it involves the paranormal. It's something that takes place as a result of a yogic practice. It's a mindset. The best way to cut short a, a promising scientific career is to invoke the paranormal uh, to explain research results. So you don't hear about any of this, okay? And that's why the rainbow body concept is so foreign. So, what does it mean to you? Well, for you personally, you can look at it this way. You have the capability within you to dissolve your body into its atomic parts by following a certain yogic practice. And it stands to reason that if you can make your body vanish, you are the same person that created it in the first place. So, the body's not you, it's something you created, and it's something that you created for a purpose. And so that leads us into a discussion of karma and reincarnation, which we will cover in future videos. But anyway, for now, I want to thank you for, uh, for listening, and uh, may God bless you.